Next.js middleware and virtual edge functions were introduced earlier this week in the Next.js conf. For the past few days I've been trying to wrap my head around how the middleware and the edge functions work and full disclosure I'm not saying that I am understanding them 100% uh, but I think after playing around with them quite a bit I now got a pretty good understanding on how they work. And even though I might not understand them 100% I still felt like I should make this video because it took me quite a while to actually get where I am now in understanding the middleware and edge functions and I'm happy if I can help you guys to actually understand them much quicker than I did. So in this video I will first explain you how the middleware and edge functions work and then we will also take a look at some code where we first create an API that is protected by basic authentication and we will use middleware to implement that basic authentication. And second, we will actually deploy and compare a normal API route function and an edge function. So if you are ready to go, hit the like button below and let's get started. First, let's take a look at middleware. And I should also mention that uh, middleware and the edge functions both are still in beta, so there still might be some bugs along the way. So middleware is basically a function that runs before a request is completed. So before API route function is executed or before the code for a page is run. And we can modify the response based on user's request. So for example we can get the user's geolocation from the request and then redirect the user based on that. If you deploy your application to Vercel, the middleware will run on the edge functions, which we will talk in a minute. And if you want to host your application somewhere else, that is possible too, because the middleware works out of the box using the next start. So that's in short what the middleware functions are. So they run before the request is completed. You can modify the response inside the middleware and they are deployed as edge functions if you deploy them to Vercel. Okay, so that was middleware. So what's the edge then? Well, edge is the Microsoft Edge web browser, which is fast and secure browser that helps you protect your data and save time and money. I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. Okay, so what's the edge? The edge functions, uh, well, the best way I found to explain what edge functions are is to compare them to serverless functions. Let's first recap how serverless functions work. So when you deploy a serverless function to Vercel, it gets deployed to a server somewhere in the world, for example in San Francisco. Then requests made to that function will be executed in the server in San Francisco. So if the request is made somewhere geographically close to San Francisco, then the request will be pretty fast. But if you are making a request to that function somewhere that is far away geographically from San Francisco, let's say for example in Helsinki, Finland, then the request will be much slower. And this is where edge functions can help us. So in simplicity, edge functions are serverless functions that run geographically close to the user that makes the request, making the request very fast regardless if you are in a San Francisco or in Helsinki. When you deploy your Next.js application to Vercel, all the uh, underscore middleware.js files or the middleware functions will be deployed as edge functions. So that function will be deployed to all regions around the world. So instead of the function sitting on a server in San Francisco, it will be actually sitting on multiple servers around the world. And I found this tweet that explains this very well in my opinion. So James Q. Quick asked if someone can explain the edge in context of web development and there was a couple of good answers right here. One by Jeremy Morgan saying yes it is web apps deployed to servers geographically closer to the visitor so folks in other countries or areas can access it with fewer network hops. So that pretty much explains it. And then there was also answer by tweets by Colin saying that the files in your slash API folder on Next.js are usually configured to run in a single region on Vercel. And right here we can open up the different regions and then also that the new underscore middleware files run in multiple geographies by default and the region closest to your user will respond. 
So this leads to less overall latency. And then there was this one more answer right here by Brantley Harris. This is in my opinion a very good analogy of this. So first you must understand that the CDNs are like putting the things you want in Walmarts all over the world so you can just go get it rather than sending it to you via FedEx from a warehouse in Oklahoma. And then edge computing is putting not just objects in Walmarts but whole services in each one and they are all exactly the same. So this was very well said in my opinion. So now let's take a look at some code and how we can actually use these functions. So I have my Visual Studio code open right here and I just initialized new project with create next app. And first let's add a basic authentication to our API routes using the middleware. So I'm gonna open up the pages folder and the API folder. And right here we have the hello.js route that is the default API route and let's add a basic authentication to this API route. So in order to add middleware I'm first going to create a new file called underscore middleware and the way we can use middleware is to export a function called middleware from this file. So let's add that and the function gets the request as a parameter. And now let's add some logic to check the basic authentication. I'm just gonna copy paste some basic authentication code here because it's really not relevant how we do it but where we do it. So I'll paste it in and let's quickly go through it. So inside the function we first get the authorization header right here. Then if the authorization header is set we will parse the username and password from the header and then we just check if the user equals admin and password equals to password. And if they do then we just return this next response and call the next function. And what this next function does is it returns a next response that will continue the middleware chain. And then right here if the basic authentication was not set and the user or password didn't match then we will return a new response saying that authentication is required. So let's save this and I'll open up my postman and let's make a request to that API route. Oh and we need to start our server. And now let's try again. Okay, we get the auth required message, which is good because we didn't define the credentials yet. So I'm gonna open up the authorization tab and from the auth type, I'll select basic auth. And for username, I have admin and for the password, I have the password. Now let's make the request again. And it looks like we get an error. And oh yeah, we forgot to import that next response. Let's do that save it and let's try it again. Okay, now we get the JSON response we wanted. And if I change the username for example and make it again, we get the auth required message. So it's that easy to add a basic authentication to your API routes. And now the cool part in this is that if we want to add for example a new route inside the API, let's make a new one. I'll just call it hello to and modify the response like this. Let's save it and try to make a request in that. So slash API slash hello to. We get the result and again if we change the credentials so they don't uh, match and make the request we get the auth required message. So by only adding this middleware file we get the authentication to all endpoints inside our uh, API folder. If we didn't use the middleware we would probably have to do something like checking the authentication inside every route. So this is much easier and convenient. And last, let's compare the edge functions and the normal API route functions. So what I'm gonna do is actually, again, copy paste some code inside here and then go through it. Okay, so what I did was move the hello code that we just made inside a hello folder and created a post folder over here. And right here we have two folders. The first one is called edge and inside of it we have the middleware file and then just post.js file which is basically an empty handler. And inside the no edge file we have just the post file and inside of here we have some logic too. So the idea here is that we make a request to the API with a post ID and as a result we get the post title. And for getting the post title I'm actually using this JSON placeholder API. That's a free 
a dummy API that you can query, for example, posts. And when we make a request to this API, let's try it out. So if I replace the post ID, for example, with one and send it, we get this JSON object as return. And for this example, we will use the title property here and just return it from our API. So inside the no edge file, we are getting the post ID from the query parameters. Then we just check that it exists. And if it does, we'll use the fetch to get the JSON and then we return the title. So that's pretty basic stuff you would do inside of an API route. But with the edge folder, we actually do all this inside the middleware function. So right here we have the middleware function exported and inside of there we get the URL from the request and then from the URL parameters we will get the post ID. I know this is a bit ugly but hey sue me. Then we check that the post ID exists and if it does then we'll use fetch to get the post as we did in the API route and then actually return the JSON right here in the middleware. So we don't even need to go to the API route and we can return the JSON right here in the middleware. And as you can see, we can use fetch here because the middleware uses the strict runtime which supports standard web APIs. So this is our middleware and what I'm gonna do now is actually deploy this to Vercel. If you don't know how to deploy your app to Vercel, don't worry, I have a video about it, so you can check it out from there. Okay, I have my project open in Vercel dashboard and it is deployed. And I'm gonna click the visit button and copy paste the URL for this. And then switch back to my postman, make a new request, paste in the URL. And then the route we want to check is, let's start with the no edge route. So we will go slash API slash post slash no edge slash post. And then let's add the post ID like this. And let's make the request. We get the title as response, so that's good. And right here we can see how much time the request takes. So the first one is always slower because it's caching it. So let's make a few more. So as we can see it's about 250 to 30, like 200 milliseconds. Give it a take. 200 to 250. And if we change this to the edge one, so this was the one that runs on the API route, the basic API route. And it took us a little bit over 200 milliseconds. And now if we change it to edge and make the request again, now it's making the request to this endpoint and it's doing all the work inside the middleware function. So let's make a few more requests to see how much it about takes. So let's see. The first one 300, okay. 80, 70, 130, 80, 100, 80. Like we see it takes around 100 milliseconds and with the no edge version it took like 200 milliseconds. So right here I know this is not like the best way to test this but just to give you an idea how the edge functions work. So right now the its function is actually deployed on multiple servers and when I make the request it actually makes the requests to the server that's closest to me geographically. And when I'm using the no edge version, so we are not using the edge functions like this, the request is actually going to probably that San Francisco server or Washington server that's pretty far away from me. So this way the edge functions can be much faster than the normal API route functions. I really hope you found this video helpful and if you did please leave a comment, like this video and hit the subscribe button below.